Hello and welcome to this video on Spatial Domain Processing for Image Enhancement. Your host, Sunil Karamchandani. Well, the ThinkPair Share activity, let's begin from there, where the students were given GUI created uh, for image enhancement and they had to create uh, using uh, using that GUI, they had to create the digital negative of an image and also generate and plot the mathematical transformation for the same. As a share activity, they had to interpret the transfer function for the digital negative graphically. Well, the deliverables achieved through this activity was that any operation on an image, simply put, is nothing but the manipulation of its image pixels. Of course, the manipulation is performed by correlating the required enhancement function with the corresponding mathematical equation in terms of two-dimensional, because as we know, an image is a two-dimensional function. Well, this manipulation of the image pixels is called as the spatial domain processing. So let's see how spatial domain processing helps in image enhancement. Let's see uh, this image on the left, which is a very low contrast image, vis a vis the image on the right, which is very bright. So you require a transform T to convert the image from low contrast to a good one. So how do we do that? So first let us represent each of these images by a function. The original image f of xy, the transformed image f of xy, undergoing a transformation t. Now the size of the image can be a square matrix and or it could be a non-square matrix. Most of the transformation do support non-square matrices as well. Well, this transform t, as in spatial domain, it operates either on a single pixel or on a neighborhood pixel. If it is a, if it is, if T is operating on a single pixel, it is called as a point transformation. If T is operating either on the four neighborhood or on the eight neighborhood of a pixel, it is called as mask processing. So you have point processing and you have mask processing. Now, uh, if we, if, when we are continuing with this presentation, uh, every pixel of the image f of xy is denoted by r and every pixel of g of xy is denoted by s. So basically what we have to do is find the transform t which maps every r to s. Now when we are talking about spatial domain processing, let's see what are the different types of processing. Now the first we take is point processing. Now in point processing, the simplest one available is the histogram. We all know from statistics that histogram is just a graphical representation of the numerical data. How does it do it? Well, let's take an image f of x, y, a 4 cross 4 image with these values of the image as we know are called as the gray levels of the image. Okay, So this is a 3 bit resolution. So the lowest bit would be 0, the highest bit would be 7. Okay, Now, the, the histogram basically gives you a table of how many times every pixel has occurred in the image. So for each gray level, it counts the number of pixels. Now let's see how do we plot this histogram. Really a very simple technique. So for the histogram, here I have in the x-axis the pixel value r and the frequency on the y-axis. So let's take the same image. Now I'll just have to detour to show you how the plotting is done. So here I would do edit data and when I would do edit data, here I would get an Excel file. So here what I would do is the number of, I would count zero pixels, but there are no pixels. So I would put a zero, one is there are six, so I would put a six, two is again I think so there are four pixels, so it would be four. For three, uh, if you have again four pic pixels having gray value three, there is one pixel having gray value 4, uh, no pixel having gray value 5, um, one pixel with 6 and no pixel with 7. Now if you add or if you observe here, you get the relative occurrence of these pixels on this graph, which this graph is called as the histogram. Now if you see the total which you get in the table, as we take the sum of the elements, we take the sum here for d2 to d9 and we see that it is 16 which is nothing but the size of the image. So very simple point processing which enables us to just a graphical representation of the image. 
Now, we extend this uh, histogram. Basically, the histogram is for image enhancement. How does histogram go into image enhancement? Okay. Now, the second slide will be a slight modification. So, we continue the slide show from the current slide. Yeah. Now, we represent histogram here. Oh, done through this. Yes. The, we, this is the, the second, the modification to histogram is called as the normalized histogram. In the case of the normalized histogram, first we have made a table of all the pixel values as we saw in the Excel file, number of times each, each is repeated. Okay. Now we represent the histogram as a probability density function. Now why, why do we this, would this be called as a probability density function? Let's go into the next slide. What we do is every n of r we divided by the size of the image, that is m cross n. So therefore, uh, performing these calculations here, 0 divided by 16, 6 divided by 16. So if you perform these calculations and if you add the total value down here, you would get the sum of all this equal to 1. And therefore, the histogram is called as the normalized histogram is nothing but the plot of the probability density functions. So in the previous graph, wherever the frequency graph, frequency axis is there, is replaced by the PDF function. And each value of, each value for each gray level, you get the probability density function for that particular gray level. Okay. Now, how is this histogram helpful in interpreting the image? Let's see. First, the low contrast image. If you see the low contrast image, all the pixels are bunched together. Okay, low contrast. Now, an overexposed image, therefore, overexposed means a lot of light is there, so it has to tend to be brighter. So, all the histogram, all the pixel values will be more to the higher side. So, here approximately, say, 4 to pixel value 4 to pixel value 7. Okay, now, underexposed image, there is no light and the picture is taken. So obviously the, all the pixels will be turned bunched towards the lower side. So just looking at the histogram, we can see that the quality how what the quality of image is. Now basically what we are trying to do is uh, this enhancement technique using histogram, okay, using histogram, we will try to convert these low contrast images or over and under exposed image to good looking images. Now how do we do that? Go to the next slide. The process of enhancing the pixels or the process of enhancing the image to appear to like to be a good image is called as histogram equalization. The type of histogram processing in which the pixels are modified based upon the intensity distribution of the image is called as global histogram processing. Okay. So now as we saw in low contrast and uh, other images, the, the, the pixel values were either bunched together or on the lighter side or on the brighter side. So basically what we require is for a good image, you have, should have a uniform histogram with the pixel values spanned over a large value of large variety of gray stones, tones. They should not be concentrated at, or not be accumulated together. Then we have to, for this, we have to map each luminance level to a new value such that the output image has a uniform distribution of gray levels. Okay. Now, how do we do that? For that, as you know, we require a transformation function t. S is equal to t of r. Okay. Now, how should this transformation function look like? Now, if by chance the transformation function t of r is monotonically decreasing, so let us just see what happens. Now the value of R1 will give you a value of S2 which is which is higher than the value of R2, than the value of S for the corresponding value of R2. So what is going to happen is as your uh, as your pixel value increases, the final output, the, the enhanced image, supposedly enhancement, will give you a values which will be in the reverse order. So a monotonically decreasing function is out of focus. So now you see what happens if the function should be monotonically increasing function. Now in the case of monotonically increasing function, if R2 is greater than R1, S2 is greater than S1. So here the mapping from the R domain 
to S domain is proper. Second point that we have to notice that every value of R should correspond to one and only one value of S. One value of R cannot correspond to two values of S. Remember it is a function. So if it's a function, it has to be one to one. Every uh, value of R should have one and only one value of S. Okay. One S can have more than two. One value of S can have more than two R values. But every R should have one and only one value of S. Now, uh, let, let's summarize these points in another slide. The properties of histogram equalization. The first is T should be a single valued function and it should be a non-decreasing function. Second, for S, we know that R is the PDF. So for PDF, the values are always between 0 and 1. So the map values of S also have to be also between 0 and 1. So this type of mapping is a non-linear mapping. Okay? And T has to be single valued. Then let's have a look. Of, as, as I said, this is a function. T of R should be 1, 1 and it has to be on 2. Why on 2? Because R values are mapped to S values, but R values may not be mapped to all the S values. They can be mapped to most of the S values. Okay, But the reverse has to be true. R, every value of R should have one and only one value. It should have one and only one value of S compulsory. Okay, Let's have a look graphically. Now on the left here, you have the probability distribution of the of the low contrast image, you have to convert it to a probability distribution, you have to convert it into a good image. So for that you require that the pixel values are uniformly distributed throughout. So your PS of S should be uniformly distributed. So for that we have to see that the above three conditions are satisfied. Now how this PS of S is derived we will see in the next lecture. Thank you very much.